More Chumba Casino fan mail. Love this. It says, Dear Ryan, I love Chumba Casino. There's so much fun. I love the wild ride from the social slots to the slingo to jackpots quicker than a six-time real spin. Everybody's finding their fun at Chumba Casino. Why don't you find out for yourself? Head to ChumbaCasino.com and enjoy hundreds of casino-style games for free with your welcome bonus. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Hey guys, Killstokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. Today, I'm going to give you two methods that you can use to eliminate your trading mistakes and find more consistency in your trading. I just finished recording a fire episode, went to check some YouTube comments and got an excellent comment from a good buddy of mine, Toby. And well, I ran back, plugged the microphone back in and hit the record button and here we are again. So if you've been a follower of the Trading Coach podcast for, you know, maybe the last thousand plus episodes, you know that one of the common themes that I like to preach here is the power of trading psychology. I've experienced this through my own journey. I've experienced this through the journey of hundreds of thousands of other traders that I've worked with, and we are all alike. We all need psychology to make things work. We all tend to come into trading looking for the strategy, the approach, the system. And what we realize during that journey is that it doesn't really matter how great or good that strategy, approach, or system is if you can't consistently execute it. And that's where trading psychology comes in. Trading psychology is your ability to deal with, you know, to deal with the ups and downs of trading, the the highs of making lots of money, the lows of being in a drawdown, the the speed of having a lot come your way at once, the the boredom of trading over a summer and and you know sitting and watching paint dry. Psychology is so important and until you become a master of yourself, you are never going to master Master the markets. And one of the greatest stories that I have in my trading career, this is the one that even wowed my mentor. I still remember sharing this for the first time. We were at a live event um, in Kansas and we were presenting and I wasn't even actually presenting this time. It was someone else presenting on something. And I just raised my hand and said, hey, you know what worked for me? I did this. I'm just, you know, sharing a little Akil Stokes story and everyone has their jaw wide open. They're like, that is brilliant. And I'm like, me? Brilliant? Those words have never been used together before. Um, But from that moment on, I try to share the story as much as possible because it is really powerful. And I'll give you a brief version of it because many of you guys know it already. But essentially, I was trading. My results weren't what they what I expected them to be. I was blaming everyone, mentor, strategy, system, economy, world, uh, you know, my kid. I didn't have kids back there, but my future kids, I blamed them to everyone but myself. And when I finally ran out of people to blame, I looked in the mirror, blamed myself. I went back to the A-B split test and saw that it wasn't my trading strategy. It wasn't my future kids. It wasn't the world or anything else like that that was affecting my trading. It was me because I was not doing what I was supposed to do. I was saying all the right things. I was looking for all the right things, but I wasn't necessarily following through with them. And because I wasn't great at journaling, I you know, I wasn't really admitting that I was messing up. And I went back and I ran through everything again. I said, hey, if I just would have done the things that I was supposed to do, I would be successful. And this was kind of at like my rock bottom moment. So I was broke. I decided, well, not broke. I was I was going broke because I didn't, I, you know, I didn't think I was going to make any profit. I was at the end of my my nest egg, right? Flashback before that, I quit three jobs to pursue full-time trading, thinking I was going to be um, successful. <laughs> I think I was going to make a lot more money than I initially did and thinking I was going to be successful a lot quicker than I initially was. So I had this nest egg that was put aside for trading and it was running out because I wasn't making the money that I thought I was going to make. So kind of my last effort, and it's a blessing in disguise because I kind of gave up. I was like, all right, well, let's start filling out some resumes. We'll get back into workforce and just, you know, we'll just do what I'm supposed to do. Um, I made a goal to limit my trading mistakes. And I knew that doing it all at once would be tough. And this is my, my mindset on goal setting to begin with. I promise I'll get back to the story. But you know, a lot of people like goals. A lot of people like long-term goals. I'm actually not a long-term goal type of person. I, I do think we need to have a vision. We need to have a direction on where we want to go. But for me, what I value more is what are we going to do to achieve that goal? And the reason I'm, I'm like that is because, you know, I, I don't like to think too 
long term in the future. But also, I've had so many friends, family members, I'm sure you've seen it as well, these people that have these big goals, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and 10 years from now, I'm going to be that. But they never actually, they, they spend all this time thinking about the big goal and, 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 and making that you know, uh, you know, uh, their reality thing, whatever they, their, their vision board, making a vision board for that. But they spend little time on the things like the actual work that is needed to achieve that goal. I am the exact opposite. I don't spend a lot of time on big goals, but I spend a massive amount of time on the small tactics, whether it's yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, whatever, in what's going to you know get me to that goal and understand that that goal may change but if i keep grinding away really really hard on those small tactics i'm going to be moving in the positive direction and something that happens when people uh, make big goals as well is they get intimidated right they see this big goal they have to achieve this massive amount and it's intimidating and they just shut down so for me instead of kind of making a big intimidating goal that said, hey, I'm going to eliminate my mistakes, right? Because I was making like 30 mistakes, right? Um, I said, you know what? Let's just let's just take this in little bite-sized chunks. Instead of eliminating all my mistakes, I'm going to make one less mistake a month. So if I made 30 in January, my goal was 29 in February. If I made 29 in February, my goal was 28. Understanding that if I consistently work on just kind of small, continuous improvements, Kaizen philosophy, right? then eventually I will get to zero or close enough to zero. I've never, I never, never actually gotten to zero. I still make mistakes every once in a while. I think that's just part of being human, but the goal is still to get to zero. That's my ultimate goal for the year. If I ever do that, I'll pop champagne and, and celebrate it. If you guys have seen my, my videos on YouTube, I've got a, a nice gift bottle of Cavarcier sitting on the back shelf that is waiting uh, for me to achieve a year with no mistakes. I will drink it all in that same night. I will trade the next day and probably make a lot of mistakes on January 1st because I'm hungover in the markets. <sighs> right? Just kidding. But that was my goal. And I eventually cut down my mistakes. And long story short, as I cut down my mistakes, my trading became more profitable. I wasn't doing anything different. Technically, I was just doing what I was supposed to do. And I've always told traders that method of, hey, just eliminate one at a time. Well, today, I was, as I was reading the comments from my YouTube channel, right? Toby uh, brought in a, a kind of a, a good bit of advice and, and he gives a lot of advice. So I know that you guys don't spend a lot of time in the comment section. It's typically toxic in most places. I'm fortunate enough to have a, a good enough community where for the most part, it's not toxic. Every once in a while, you get like a weirdo in there. But for the most part, it's actually traders giving good advice. And he said what he does is he makes a goal where he's like, hey, I want to have blank amount of trades in a row without making mistakes. So I want to do 25 trades in a row without making mistakes. And then once I hit that number 25, I start over. And it's the same type of concept where it's like, hey, I want to have a full year of not making trading mistakes. For me, that's over 200 trades, right? That's a very big number to, to get to 200. It, it's all the way out there. You can barely see it. It's very stressful and you don't really get rewarded for it. Like you get like 10 in a row and you're like, oh, that doesn't mean anything. I got 190 to go, like big deal. It's like uh, for you guys that ever ran like marathons, right? You know, I, when I ran my first marathon, I got to like mile three and people were like, yeah, you got this. And I was like, yeah, I do got this. And I was like, crap. I got 23 to go like this, <laughs> this is going to be bad. Um, and then I, you know, cramped up and, and walked most of it and decided to do another one. And then it didn't get any better. It was better. It just wasn't great. And I learned I wasn't built for marathons, went to try triathlons instead. But when you have a goal that big, it's, it's hard to follow through with it because there's there's no real reward. By setting something like Tony or Toby did where he says, hey, 25 it's 25 is achievable you can see 25 it is right down the road and the closer you get to it the closer you get to that goal and that sense of achievement and then once you get there right you get excited you you drink that whole bottle of Cavarcia and then you start over not the next day because you'll be hung over and make more mistakes but I thought about this in the sense of reward too because a story from another trader that um, I worked with and this was another negative one was he had a goal to eliminate mistakes. He was doing the same thing as me, eliminate blank amount per month. And then whenever he made a mistake, he had to buy his wife um, a piece of jewelry, right? So his wife pulled up a chair, sat right behind him every trading day and just waited for him to make mistakes. And eventually he said that making a mistake in the market um, and, and buying his wife jewelry was more expensive and more painful than the pleasure that he got from doing whatever he wanted to do to sabotage his trading. So he stopped making mistakes because he was slowly going broke 
buying his wife jewelry. And that worked as well. So that sense of, you know, kind of punishment for breaking your rules. But I also like positive reinforcement. Maybe it's because I have kids and they're saying that this is what we should do. We should be positive and reward our kids for doing stuff instead of punishing them, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, my kids, if I wanna punish them, I can punish them. <clears throat> Worry about your own kids. But I actually do like that method of gamification, making it a game. And you'll have to choose your own number. It could be 25, it could be 20, it could be 10, 15. I would start with a small number, especially if you're a newer trader. But give yourself a goal. Say, I am going to make five consecutive good trades in a row. And a good trade is a mistake-free trade and good, uh, good across the board. Now, you can do this other ways as well. We talk about grading your trades in different aspects, uh, pre, during, post. You can break it down to uh, analysis, exit, you know, uh, entry, all that fun stuff as well and, and give yourself like a, a grade, a percentage of it. But let's just keep it simple for now and just say a good trade 100% across the board. I think that's the best way to do it. And give yourself a goal. Say, hey, whenever or when, right, be positive, positive affirm affirmations. We spoke about this positive talk in the, in the previous podcast. When I achieve five consecutive good trades in a row, I'm going to reward myself with blank, right? It could be, I don't, I don't know, what, what, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can have a cheat meal if you're someone that's on a diet. You can go out and buy yourself a present if you're Jason Greystone. Buy yourself a new microphone and a new, cam a new camera, something like that. But reward yourself for achieving that goal. And then each time you achieve it, you have to up the goal a little bit. So if it's five the first time, the next one is maybe seven or maybe 10. Now you've got to go to 10 in a row. Then when you achieve 10, you've got to go to 15. You get to 15, you got to go to 20, right? You get it. And before you know it, right, you're, you're, you're building a habit by taking good trades. And eventually, like, you don't even need that positive reinforcement because you're, you're building a habit. Again, I've seen this with my kids where we, you know, we positively reinforce them, <clears throat> buy them stuff. When they do a certain action, before they know it, it's a habit and they do it and forget the reason even supposed to get paid for it. I hope they're not listening to this, right? But the same thing works with your trading. Before you know it, taking five good trades in a row is no longer difficult. Having a mistake-free 10 trade losing streak or winning <laughs> 10, no, losing streak, having a mistake-free 10 trade streak is no longer difficult. So you're, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're, you're positively reinforcing yourself, which is always good to treat yourself and, and reward yourself for doing the right action. But secretly, you're building a habit because as you do this for 30 days, as you do this for 45 days, as you do this for 90 days, it becomes a habit. And now you're just doing the right thing without even having that positive reinforcement. So I thought it was a very good tactic, something that you guys may want to try out if you're looking for something uh, the opposite of what I do, or maybe give both a try, right? See which one meets your personality better. Either way, what you're doing is you're developing the ability to have a, a, a professional trader mind state. You're developing the ability to consistently take good trades and, you know my saying, consistent analysis plus consistent execution equals consistent results. You're welcome. So don't just listen to the Trading Coach Podcast, practically apply it as well. And hey, let me know what you think. If there is something that you choose from this episode that you want to use and you want to come back and, and tell me how it's been, I would love to hear it. I love hearing great trader stories. Or if you have another method that works great for you, share it as well. And guess what? It may become an episode of the Trading Coach Podcast and I will give you a delightful shout out. Either way, this is a community. It's not just me here talking. We want to help provide traders with the best opportunity to succeed, and it takes a village. All right, until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Adios.